So hello everyone and welcome to this series of videos and welcome Frédérico on stage. Hello Janine, thank you. Today we will speak about uh, how to build an application and to provide you some guidelines. And maybe first we want to speak about the, the topic we will discuss for the few videos, the, the conveyor or the line. And you have a picture for us, so let's bring it uh, here. Yeah. Can you explain a bit what we will build over the, these few videos? Yes. The idea is to build uh, together an application showing how you can model and uh, program um, this very simple uh, demonstrator, this very simple uh, logistic uh, line, okay. able to recirculate boxes and uh, download them through this, uh, through this exit bay. Okay, seems uh, simple enough. So we see the physical line already, and I guess that we will split it into components. Maybe you want to say one or two words about component? Yes. Uh, the idea is that this physical demonstrator is made up of uh, seven conveyors, okay, a transfer and an exit bay. Each of these uh, objects can be represented into EIE with, uh, uh, with a cut, with uh, an object that you can uh, properly program and reuse it in different part of, the, of, your, uh, of your software architecture. This makes the code much more reusable, readable and well organized, let me say. Okay, very good. Um, you, I know that you prepared a small video to, to see it a bit in action. It would be uh, easier to have it in our mind. So if, if you display the video, let's go there. <laughs> okay, so we have the video where we can see the box turning on the conveyors. So as you said, there is seven conveyors. Yeah, Each of them will be a component probably. And then you see that the, uh, it's starting. Uh, we can see also a photo cell to know if the box is here or not here. Yeah. Exactly. And at the end, it's going out. So thank you, Federico. We saw that it's a moving part. Now let's have a look into, into the project directly. Today, we will use uh, EcoStructure Automation Expert to, to show. In the videos, in the series of videos, we will show with other editors like Fordiags how we can do similar things. But today, let's create a new project on EAE and see, see how to model this. So this is your new project, and maybe the first thing to do is to create a, a component called conveyor. Yes, the best way to do it is, is to use a, a cut dedicated to this. We will see that this allows you to create also your own symbol for the HMI and to reuse it um, also in other um, part of the code. Let's call it conveyor. It is a normal cut implemented as a composite. So very standard, very simple uh, object. OK. OK. On default, EIE uh, gives you this kind of uh, event input, output, variables, and so on. But typically, you always you need to remove them because you will totally customize from scratch this object. OK. OK. And if we go inside, I know that we want to, to show a layout structure, which is um, something to follow to have uh, an application that can scale. Maybe you can bring this layout in the view and maybe have a, an overview and explaining each frames. Yes, of course. The idea is that we can organize uh, frames in this way. OK. OK. So each object we are going to create in our application will have its own internal initialization when we are when we are building a cut here in the HMI interface we will use the ids it is a special uh, block of uh, EAE able to directly communicate with HMI input and output we have a functional input interface so that your conveyor cut is able to receive signal command parameters and so on from we will call them parent higher level uh, object in your um, software hierarchy. And uh, here we have a functional output interface output. to do uh, basically the same stuff, but in output. Uh, of course, our conveyor will communicate with the field. So typically in this application, communicate with the digital input, for example, photo cell, input photo cell, output photo cell, and so on. In the children frame, we can put here all the um, 
children of our subsystem, of our component. In this case, we will show how uh, we can control a motor. And um, in the logic frame, of course, we implement uh, the, local, the local simple logic, okay? Okay, so with this, this frame organization, we, we structure our code somehow. So we saw that there is seven conveyors in, your, in the video. Maybe we can just create these seven conveyors in, in the application. Yes. Because now that we have the, the empty uh, structure of a conveyor, we can directly put it in, in the system here. Yeah. This can be the conveyor number one, for example. Okay, so this is the instance of, of the type conveyor one, and then you will you will use it seven times probably. Let's reproduce. So you know that you can also control and and move a block, and it will copy paste. It, it's yeah, a yeah, of course. Nice trick for for the people to know to copy in a easy manner. Yeah. Okay, very good. So now we have already our structure of of our. Um, project and we want probably the conveyor to speak to each other and for this there is a, a, a very important concept called adapter to share yes. information from blocks to block maybe you want to to explain a bit and then show it here in the conveyor how it will look like yeah uh, the idea is that uh, in such an application each conveyor will have to communicate something to his uh, um, to the conveyor next uh, to it and also receive comment from the previous one. For example, I'm downloading a box, I'm receiving a new box, and this will help also higher level logic to, to properly work. Okay. Uh, the, the good way, the good approach to do it, to avoid a lot of uh, signals, a lot of events, is to um, compact, let me say, everything into one dedicated object called adapter. So let's create together a new item. Let's call it, for example, I loop chain. Okay. Again, in this case, let's remove event and variables. We don't need at the beginning with the idea that we are going to customize it later. As soon as we need something, we will put it here. Now our adapter is created and we can customize the conveyor interface using using this adapter okay let's go here and uh, for example let's show that in a socket form we can use the adapter we just created see it is available here main i loop chain okay and in a plug form we can use the output chain okay, okay like this you give the two sides of, of the the chain to give to the next conveyor or to the previous conveyor. Now, if you save and go to the system, uh, yeah, maybe it's better like this. Yeah, very good. We are now in the code of the conveyor and we see the two socket and plug. And like this, we can move it in the right frame. See here, very good. so the functional input interface, here we will have uh, events and variables available, available to do logics, to control motor and so on. And he, here, the same. Okay. And How from the outside world, so in the system, yes, exactly. We have to organize a bit. Yeah, sure. On the cut. No problem. And then we can already link them uh, because they are the same adapter type. So yeah. we can link the out to the in of the previous to the next year. This. And we Sometimes, can already yeah. see that in the in the code itself. So while you do this, huh, in in the code itself, we can see that it's the same representation than the physical view actually. So we see here a line, and it's a it's a line in physical world, or oh, it's a ring. I don't know how to say it. And it's a ring here as well. Very good. Maybe the step after now that we did these these rings and we like to model and and refine the code or refactor the code is to put all this itself in another cat called maybe ring, yeah. right? That's the component-based approach we want to use in this uh, series of videos. So I will show you how to use this children frame properly. So let's create a new item. Let's call it ring. 
again we can remove removing the default in. input output yes yeah <clears throat> see it's totally empty we can easily copy and paste the frame organization from the conveyor cut paste it here and the idea now is that uh, ring uh, we build in the application with all the conveyors connected with the adapter will be then uh, inserted into this children frame of the ring cut so the parent of all mm -hmm. the conveyor able to uh, orchestrate them and create logic to make them work okay Let's see if we can easily copy them here okay and now in the system maybe you will remove the conveyors and yeah. add just add just uh, an instance of the ring we can call okay. it ring one ring one very good so this is what i called refactoring is that we change the code the way it is to structure it in the good way so now we have a ring that has children and each children which is a conveyor, has an input and output plug and socket to be able to speak to each other. Yeah, exactly. Is it a good summary of what we wanted to explain in this first video? It's a perfect summary. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> Thank you very much, Federico, and see you to the next one to improve our components. Bye. Yes, bye. Thank you.